Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon for this character sheet and a whole bunch more, and like and subscribe for cooler hats next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Diddy Kong, Donkey Kong's best buddy and nephew. All the Kongs are totally unique with their own abilities and hats. If you want your own Kong, just join my Patreon at the $5 tier for all these character sheets, including Donkey, Diddy, and Funky. It's just a PDF. I don't have to pretend it's anything else, and I don't have to charge you hundreds of thousands of dollars for it. You have hundreds of thousands of dollars to give me, though. I mean, DM me for sure. Hey, hey, with the monkeys, and people say we monkey around. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to fly real high with your jetpack on. Next, we'll get our pistols out like one tough Kong. Finally, we'll make people smile when we play our tune. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just keep your multi-classing minimums in mind. Dexterity will be number one. Diddy needs those backflips and cartwheels that'll make you say, hoo-ha! Wisdom next, Diddy gets along great with the animals, even the ones who don't wear hats. Intelligence after that, despite living in a treehouse, Diddy is using some pretty high-tech stuff. Follow that up with charisma, everyone loves Diddy, and he's so good at guitar, it kills people. Constitution is a bit low, Diddy's melons aren't very big, and will dump strength. Donkey and Chunky can do the heavy lifting, Diddy is here to eat bananas and shoot peanuts, and he's all out of bananas. Hadozi are a new simian race from outer space in the Travelers of the Multiverse Unearthed Arcana. They work pretty perfectly for Diddy Kong. You get plus one dexterity and plus two intelligence if that's what you want, a climbing speed equal to your normal speed, dexterous feet to let you use an object as a bonus action, maybe casually throwing a banana peel over your shoulder. You also get glide, moving five feet forward while falling for every one foot you fall. And you can use your reaction to drop falling damage to zero. Try spinning, that's a good trick. Grab animal handling and performance for your background to ride on Rambi and go totally nuts on an electric guitar. Imagine rocking out with a prehensile tail. That's like a capo you can slide whenever you want. If you want to be a monkey, there's no class monkeyer than monk. You get two skills from the monk list like acrobatics and athletics so you can swing through the air like the flying trapeze. Monks get martial arts to make unarmed attacks using your dexterity modifier. They deal a d4 of damage and you can make an unarmed attack as a bonus action to down tilt to fair or just hit someone with both feet in a cartwheel. Martial arts doesn't work in armor, so it's a good thing you get unarmored defense, making your AC 10 plus your dexterity and wisdom modifier when you're not wearing armor. I said armor, not pants. Put your pants back on. Don't watch my videos without pants on. Second level monks get key points you can use to do cool chimp stuff like step the wind to dash or disengage with a bonus action and double your jump distance. Can't be a platformer without a double jump. Patient defense lets you dodge as a bonus action. Everyone in Smash can spot dodge, but Diddy has the funniest animation, so his is the best. Flurry of blows lets you make two unarmed attacks instead of one with your bonus action. Worth pointing out, it doesn't have to be a punch or even a kick. It can be any part of your body if you want to whip people with your tail. If you don't like spending key points, why are you playing a monk, but also you get unarmored movement to make you faster all the time when you're not wearing armor. Hats aren't armor, and neither are pants. But wear pants, please. Third level monks can choose a monastic tradition. Drunken master monks are great at hit and run strings with the drunken technique, which allows you to disengage for free after you make a flurry of blows with an extra 10 feet of movement speed. It puts step of the wind on your flurry of blows and makes it better, especially with a climbing speed from Hadozi. You can also deflect missiles, letting you reduce the damage of incoming ranged attacks by 1d10 plus your dexterity modifier and monk level as a reaction. If you drop that down to zero, you can even throw it back with a key point. Save them for the drunken technique and just shut the damage down for free. Fourth level monks get an ability score improvement. Bump your dexterity first, since that will make you better as an acrobat. I could talk about slow fall, but you have better slow fall from Hadozi, so I won't. Fifth level monks get an extra attack, letting you make two attacks with your action instead of one or up to four with a flurry of blows. All the better, your monk die increases to a d6 here. You also get stunning strike, letting you force a constitution saving throw onto a creature you hit with an attack, failing that they're stunned until the end of your next turn. Monkey flip onto their face like a xenomorph and then box their ears. It should throw them off. Now that we're as monkey as we need to be, let's get some non-monkey things that make Diddy who he is. We'll do that as an artificer, making you a magical tinkerer to put tiny magical effects into tiny non-magical items, puffs of smoke, little messages, things like that. Just give it a nice wooden aesthetic. For spells and cantrips, light lets you hado see in the dark with your bad hado z eyes. Mason wrote that joke and I'm glad he did. Thunderclap forces a constitution saving throw on creatures within five feet of you, dealing 2d6 thunder damage to those that fail for a little simian slam, even if you're not as chunky as some of your relatives. Grease is a first level spell that makes a 10 foot square into difficult terrain, forcing a dexterity saving throw on creatures inside and knocking them prone if they fail. 10 feet is a pretty big banana peel, but that just means you get 
get to eat a very big banana first. Catapult throws an object of five pounds or less at a creature, forcing a dexterity saving throw on them and dealing 3d8 bludgeoning damage to those that fail. If your DM doesn't let you reflavor ranged weapon ammunition as peanuts, this lets you nut someone in raw. Oh god, I need to rewrite that. Second level artificers get infusion special toys to make you better than the Kremlings. Repeating shot lets you make a weapon attack magical, adds one to the attack and damage rolls, and it never runs out of ammo. You can even ignore the loading property. Artificers are proficient with firearms, so now you're a monkey with a gun. Sounds safe. Cap of water breathing is a hat that lets you breathe underwater. This level won't be fun, but at least the music's gonna slap. I'll be totally honest, those are the only infusions I need at the moment, and you can only infuse two items per day at this point anyway, so uh, let's move on. Third level artificers can get their guns a Kimpo Chimpo. If you choose the artillerist specialty, that gives you proficiency with woodcarver's tools to make some peanut guns that do one of three things. The Force Ballista is the most optimal for guns akimbo, firing a ranged spell attack that deals 2d8 force damage and pushes a creature back five feet to blast those busy beavers. You could also make a flamethrower or protector, but the bonus action blast is way more ditty. You also get two more spells for free, like Thunder Wave, which forces a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 15-foot cube in front of you, dealing 2d8 thunder damage to those that fail and pushing them back 10 feet, half damage and no pushing if they succeed. It's also really loud, so use your guitar to shred through some enemy health. Shield adds 5 to a creature's AC as a reaction. Technically, every character in Smash should have this, but I'm always going to forget to use it and just hold forward anyway. Fourth level artificers get another ability score improvement. I'm going to cap off your dexterity first, since that will help with your peanut guns and unarmed attacks. I guess it doesn't work for your bonus action peanut force ballista, but we'll have enough room to do both. Hopefully. Fifth level artillerists get an arcane firearm, adding a d8 of damage to an artificer spell cast through it once per round. There are certainly options you could take, like Shocking Grasp, Firebolt, Ray of Frost, even Scorching Ray, free from the artificer list, but that would require a more liberal reflavoring than I'm already doing. I prefer far left reflavoring more anyway. You also get second level spells. Shatter turns your guitar up to 11, forcing a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 10 foot radius. Failing that, they take 3d8 thunder damage, half as much if they succeed. Inorganic materials and creatures made of inorganic materials have disadvantage on that saving throw, so it's especially useful in a frantic factory. Six level artificers get tool expertise, doubling your proficiency bonus with the skills you're proficient with, so woodcarvers, thieves, and tinkerers should help you make some cool infusions. Like the Cloak of the Manta Ray, which lets you breathe underwater and gives you a 60-foot swimming speed, so it's just a full upgrade on the cap of water breathing. Spell Refueling Ring lets you recover one spell slot of third level or lower ones per day, which is obviously better once we have third level slots. Seventh level artificers get Flash of Genius, letting you add your intelligence modifier to a skill check or saving throw within 30 feet of you an amount of times per day equal to your intelligence modifier use your big brain to make yourself even more acrobatic a double artificer get another ability score improvement or feat the skill expert feat adds one to an ability score like intelligence you get another skill like survival and expertise in a skill like acrobatics it's really funny to me that you don't have to line up any of these on a modifier so you can buff intelligence grab a wisdom skill and expertise in a dexterity skill it's a very flexible feat and lord knows diddy has some some flexible feet, he holds things in them. Ninth level artillerists get explosive cannon, adding a d8 of damage to your attacks with your eldritch cannon, and you can make your cannon explode, forcing a dexterity saving throw on creatures in the 20 foot radius, dealing 3d8 force damage to those that fail. Overcharging the peanut shot to make the gun explode does deal a lot of damage, but it's really hard to use, so just shoot stuff. You can also learn third level spells. Haste will help you move like a monkey with a doubled movement speed, plus two to your AC, advantage on dexterity saving throws, and an extra action to dash, disengage, hide, or make one more attack per round. It's another way to shoot really fast with your peanut poppers. You also get fireball for free from the artillerist list, forcing a dexterity saving throw on creatures in a 20 foot radius, dealing 8d6 fire damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed, letting you lob an orange grenade and watch the Kremlings kaboom. Tenth level artificers are magical item adepts, letting you tune up to four magical items at once and just in time for two more infusions. Winged boots give you a flying speed for a minute at a time so you can fly around with your jetpack on. It pairs really well with monk levels and haste since you're unarmed and movement at a speed will let you fly around incredibly fast. Maybe even too fast. I've always had trouble using the jetpack. Cloak of Protection adds one to your AC and saving throws and doesn't count as armor. It can just be a cool red shirt, not pants. But you should get some pants in real life. Bouncing back over to Monk now, six level monks get key empowered strikes, making your unarmed attacks magical in terms of overcoming resistances, so all of your punches will go through even the weirdest of enemy hides. I'm talking robots, dragonflies, robot dragonflies, whatever you like. You also get tipsy sway, letting you stand up from prone
prone with five feet of movement, and you can use a key point to redirect a melee attack that misses you to hit another creature within five feet of you. So now you can fly above everyone and shoot them, or dive in and make people hit their friends instead. Very funny, but kind of risky. Seventh level monks get less risky with evasion, meaning you take half damage from failed deck saves and no damage from successful ones. This pairs so well with some of your artificer abilities, with haste to give you advantage on the saves, flash of genius to round yourself up if you need to. Now, if your jetpack explodes, you don't have to sweat it. You also get stillness of mind, letting you remove the effects of charming or frightening as an action. Turns out, Diddy is a pretty brave guy. When his uncle gets captured, he suits up and fights for him. Twice. Eighth level monks get another ability score improvement, bump your intelligence to shoot better with your intelligence peanut popper. We'll finish this off with some more artificer levels. 11th level artificers get spell storing item, letting you put a spell of second level or lower into an item. Then other creatures can cast that spell using your intelligence modifier through that item an amount of times equal to double your intelligence modifier. I think you gotta load up on grease for bananas to spam for easy combos. It's the only way I know how to play Diddy. Our capstone is the 12th level of artificer for one last ability score improvement. Cap off your intelligence for these slipperiest banana appeals and two more bananas in a spell storing item. It's a pretty appealing proposition, in my opinion. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, an enhanced flying speed from winged boost, haste, and unarmored movement lets you hover out of range and shoot down any ranged attacks with deflect missiles. Honestly, that's going to be all three pros. The mobility helps you get where you need to go, especially if you also have Cloak of the Manta Ray, meaning you have every type of movement speed other than burrowing. And finally, you got ranged attacks to spam from the air, so you'll be consistent at dealing damage. For weaknesses, your HP is bad somewhere around 100 depending on how you roll, making you an easily squashed banana. You're also lacking strength, so you'll have to call in Donkey or Chunky for any heavy lifting. Finally, your damage might be consistent, but you're not putting out any huge hits. So if the enemy can heal, you might struggle to take them down, but you can just fly for six hours in your jetpack, so you'll probably win a war of attrition. This monkey is loaded up. Pairing Artificer with a martial class is always great, and getting monkey with it has some surprising synergy. Just watch out for a heavy hitter. It would be cruel to make this baby baboon plummet to his doom. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon for this character sheet and a whole bunch more, and sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.